Hey guys, good evening. I hope I'm pretty much audible as well as visible. Great. So uh, that's that's this looks good. Great. Good evening, everyone. Hey Vasanta. Hey Akash. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. So uh, uh, welcome again to one and all present in our chat today. So we'll be discussing about Seaborn. So that's our agenda. We are into a playlist of data analysis in three weeks. And today we are into a third class of uh, data visualization. So in data visualization, so we have studied some quite good recent uh, decent topics. So we discuss about aesthetics. So how to work on aesthetics of my graph in Seaborn. And we saw a uh, quite good detailing there. So we saw how to change the style, to change the font, to change the scale. We saw all that and also we saw about the colors, right? And then we discussed about univariate analysis where we saw how we can plot the distribution plots of my data. So by using the histograms and then, you know, KDE run chart and then the bar graphs. So that's basically my histograms that's coming toward, towards my uh, univariate analysis. And in the bivariate, uh, we, we discussed about the multiple possible interactions we could have in the, in, in the data. So uh, numeric to numeric analysis, then we have, uh, you know, in, after that we have uh, numeric to categorical analysis we have categorical to categorical analysis so multiple such interactions are possible so we have to work accordingly on that and we have to find out how exactly uh, we can uh, look forward to such detailings interactions and then uh, uh, that's where bivariate analysis comes into picture and we have seen how this can be worked on so uh, uh, we have we discussed about one of the graphs joint plot yesterday so i'll just quickly uh, give you a quick recap of whatever uh, has been discussed so far to give you a detailing of the topics and then we, we can just start uh, with, the, with the discussion today. So meanwhile guys, anybody is having any concerns of whatsoever we have discussed so far, please do let me know. So I'll take up your questions. So I'm pretty much happy to take that. But again, anybody is having any concerns of uh, whatever topics we have discussed so far, data science, Python, list, tuples, dictionaries, anything guys. So feel free to uh, let me know your questions. So I'll try to take them to the best of my knowledge. So it's pretty much a live session guys okay so it's pretty much a live session so we are uh, uh, i'm monitoring my chat as well so if anybody is having any concerns regarding any of the topics or anything in general as well so you can put up things in the chat and i'll try to try to take that cool but before starting i'll give uh, give you a quick introduction about myself as always uh, my name is arpit jain and i'm a lead data scientist myself uh, i have been into industry for almost nine years now uh, into multiple domains. I have been working with uh, finance, I've been working with uh, manufacturing, automobile, uh, cloud, telecommunication. So multiple domains I've been working with and um, any questions if you have in regarding the domains and the topics, data science, you can do let me know. Uh, also, I'm a motivational speaker. So I take industry sessions. I talk to students regarding their jobs, careers and advise them regarding that. So uh, anything regarding your job placements, career counseling, so please do let me know. Okay, so uh, do let me know. We can just quickly decide on that as well, so we can find out the details. Cool. So that's about myself, guys. So as as I said, so I'm pretty much monitoring my chat, and uh, uh, you know, uh, if you have any concerns, anything regarding any of the topics, uh, do let me know. Okay. So great. So let's start. Let's start with the content slide. Let me pull up the content slide. Just give me a minute. Uh, this should be visible. Let me just check that. Okay, so right now here, yeah. So I hope my screen is pretty much visible to you guys. So we are into bivariate analysis into Seaborn, right? Uh, uh, again, if you want me to give you a quick recap, so I'll just take five minutes and I'll just quickly tell you that. So before running to any graphs, right? We discuss about aesthetics, right? So how to talk about aesthetics? Three things. So aesthetics, we have styling, we have, uh, um, and then we have scaling, and then we have colors. Okay. So styling, we have set uh, set style function. For uh, scaling, we have set con uh, set context, and then uh, for uh, uh, for colors, we have set palette. Right. So three three different functions we used for aesthetic purpose. So at set style, we can change the default layout of my uh, graph, so the background theme, and then we can also change the axis style, right? So we can we can think about, uh, you know, uh, we can think about the directions, the, the images and the axis color and all that. So that's come under my axis style, okay? So we can see as we change the color, grid color, front, back, a lot of things which you can change, okay? 
then comes set context where we talk about the scaling of my data right so we have paper notebook and top and poster so four things we can change here right so that's about my scaling job and then for the color palettes we discuss about uh, so if you want to see look at the color palette this is a function uh, but also we can use uh, the functionality to, to, to check uh, to kind of set my uh, color palette so uh, once we have identified what palette to choose on based on the criteria such as you know random or sequential data or the diverging data so based on the shades of my data we have to find out what colors to be chosen and then based on that we can always use a function set palette so set palette it can, can be used here to find out the data find out the i mean to set the uh, actual uh, color palette we want to put in for my graph so for example here now we have changed the color based on the hustle uh, palette here right so pretty much that it and then we uh, discuss about univariate so uh, i think we have a couple of questions so let me take that before i proceed with univariate so Abhishek has a question. He says, good evening. I have watched your previous organization, Seabon Lecture. They are awesome. Uh, great, Abhishek. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we are pretty much uh, doing the same here. Sir, I done my BTEC in 2019. Can I start my career as data scientist now? Why not? Why not? Obviously, you can do that sort of. So uh, it's just like you have to look forward to your right key skills. Okay. So they are uh, basically stats, ML, Python, SQL, going to be your mandatory skills. And then you can obviously add on to whatever you want uh, but why not so, so if you have the right key skill so it's never too late and it's never too early right so if you have the right key skills you can obviously work why not okay coming back to univariate so we discuss about the histogram right so uh, that's what we are talking about my single variable plot so that's what we talked about here so we have uh, we have the distribution in terms of the bins so that's what we do will be doing so histogram represents a data distribution by forming the bins like you know smaller group of ranges of my data that's what bins are right and then eventually on those smaller ranges of my data i'll be plotting the number of observations so it's more like a frequency on top of that right so that's what my histogram says and how are we going to plot that using the function dist plot okay so that's the function dist plot to plot the univariate graph or my distribution of it right it takes four argument data bins hist or kde so let's let's look at this so we have this data of uh, iris we loaded this here right and then we have five columns sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and then a species here so basically here <coughs> we discuss about three different types of interactions right uh, numerical to categorical so for example here so this is my numeric data all of these and this is my categorical data right so now here in terms of numerical to categorical uh, we can discuss about how to find out that and then we can also uh, look forward to numerical to numerical interaction then we can also find out numerical to uh, uh, sorry uh, categorical to categorical interaction so all of three different types of interaction is possible that's pretty much uh, we can do and uh, that's what we have here uh, right so now uh, what we have done for the universities is we are plotting the <coughs> uh, numerical data here to find out uh, you know how what all uh, how the distribution is for my data right so for example i've taken the very first column sepal length okay so sepal length and then we are plotting it so using the simple function this plot so all the other arguments are optional so if we can directly pass the data here and it should be able to run it okay so uh, other options are, are optional so it will take the default value so if you run it it will take the default values that means that so here you can see two things first is my uh, rectangular boxes that is nothing but my bars and then we have a line this line is called as kde line okay so it's like giving me a trend line kind of a thing so okay so here from this graph we are able to see that it's more like a normal distribution normal distribution means my data is evenly distributed among the entire population right so here i'm seeing that first it is slightly increasing then we have a peak and then it is decreasing so it's like an even spread of my data right and here the middle value is somewhere here this so even the peak and the middle value are at the same place so that's called as a normal distribution so we have it like this now if you look at the other data like petal length okay for example petal length so this you have a zigzag kind of a graph this is not a normal distribution the data is not evenly distribu distributed for example first it is increasing then decreasing then increasing then decreasing so multiple peaks multiple lows right so that is not an ideal data to have so also uh, we saw about two different arguments hist and kde right so for example this this bar so the rectangular bar is coming from hist okay if you, if you put hist as false this bar would be gone likewise kde is nothing but my line if you put kde is false my line would be gone so it's pretty simple as that so for example if i just show it to you 
so if i put this as false right so my uh, this run chart my kde is gone okay as simple as that so nothing fancy in this guys i'm moving ahead so i'm moving to my bivariate analysis that's what the agenda says for the day starting from the joint plot okay so joint plot here uh, we have uh, so joint plot is basically giving us two things okay so look at this joint plot here it's basically a numeric to numeric interaction kind of a graph in which i'm trying to plot my two uh, so x and the y axis will be my numerical data here okay so in the numerical data we are trying to plot so uh, once we uh, do it's kind of a scatter plot for me here okay so it's like a x and y axis coordinates wherever my points lie we're going to plot it at the same point okay and then this is what going to give me my first part of my graph giving me the scatter plot okay now we have also on the graph you can see on the top and the right you have the univariate also right so you can see the distribution of my data so for example petal length here petal length you can see the distribution is like this right so for example you can see in the highs and the lows right you have already seen that likewise the petal width again there's the lows and the highs so it's pretty much as simple as that right that's what my uh, data says about a uh, joint plot so joint plot again we have two things first is my scatter plot and then the we have respective univariate analysis also being given on top and the right okay so that's what my numeric to numeric uh, interaction says cool again guys see uh, as i've always said it's not uh, it's not just like you know once you have given the data the plotting is going to be uh, any fancy thing okay so you have to also understand how to read this information how to get a, a inference business inference from this okay so now what you can see here is uh, there's an upward trend right there's a positive correlation which is very important so you can see this as as soon as long as my petal length is increasing my petal width is also increasing right? that's that's kind of an interaction a very good inference which you can see from the data okay now coming to my next plot which is hex bin okay so hex bin is like an alternative to what we have in joint plot okay so in the joint plot the only difference is instead of having a scatter plot in the in between the hex bin will be will be having the hexagons uh, plot in the between okay and here it shows the density of the part okay so wherever the density is higher it's going to be shaded as a bit dark okay so here you can see this when the data is sparse in density that is when the data is very scattered and difficult to analyze through scatter plot so the objective of this is it, sh it 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 mentions how the overall distribution in terms of interaction looks like in my data so for example here you can see this uh, pure black is in two regions that that shows that the interaction the majority of my data points interacting between my petal width and petal length is lying in this area okay so the number of data points between my petal length 4 and 5 and also at the same time petal width between 1 and 1.5 are the maximum okay likewise here also this is falling under my maximum category so uh, most populated densely populated area likewise as the shades go on uh, uh, shades go i mean uh, as they go on decreasing in their uh, uh, shade uh, de uh, i mean i would say uh, the heaviness so here it, i will say that you know the darker the shade more heavy the population is lighter the shade you know it's it's like less populated it's more of like in decreasing order okay so this hex uh, so hex plot hex bin plot this is giving us the density uh, understanding of my interaction okay again a very interesting plot guys so remember this so hex bin plot is giving the density of my data okay so that's the business inference so here uh, right so we are trying to uh, what is my business in inference from this like you know there are two major uh, populated interaction between uh, uh, interactive interaction area between a petal width and a petal length which is falling under my this and this area okay that's what the business inference inference is the second is my uh, the third is my kde plot okay so respective kde plot is or the kernel density estimation okay it is like how to uh, again the same thing so information from hex bin plot and the kde plot are similar it is also giving us a density information okay but in a different visual way okay so again the uh, the uh, kind of here is so here in the joint plot so again okay how to run this look at this so uh, we use the same function joint plot only so uh, the function will remain the same but here in the in the argument kind we're going to provide as hex h e x so if we provide hex it's going to plot the hex bin plot for the joint plot itself it's like it's a different category of my joint plot likewise if you want to have a kde plot uh, the function will still remain the same joint plot only but again uh, in the kind we're going to provide kde okay so that's going to be uh, uh, my kde plot here uh, okay vasantha says uh, uh, explain once again uh, okay so uh, uh, you're talking about the hex bin okay 
so again see uh, there are three different kind the three different types of joint plots okay so one is my scatter so here you can see here in the between we have scatter this is by default okay so scatter plot is by default if we just use the function joint plot that's what we're gonna get scatter plot in between okay now we can change this joint plot using the kind function hex so there are two different kinds which you can give hex and kde okay so hex gonna give you the hexagons uh, in between uh, which is showing you the density Okay. So here in this scatter plot, you're just seeing the population, the overall data, which is populated in the overall graph, right? So where all the, where all the points lie, but you have to infer we, we, here, here, we're trying to identify a, a trend, the interaction trend between my two data points, okay, X and Y axis. But in hex bin, what we're inferring, we, we are inferring something sort of the density of my data. So how the density looks like, right? So where the maximum data points of interaction is present so that's what my hex bin is giving me that's my core business inter inference okay now in terms of uh, so, so now in terms of kde so kde may we have uh, what so again kde is also giving us uh, uh, my uh, uh, water density only okay so here in this density also likewise you can see here two major points right so i have one like this and then we have another like this here, okay? So we have two major points here. So we have uh, what? So in, in the, uh, uh, what to say, in KDE plot also, we are getting two circles. So you can see this, this is one circle. I mean, the uh, major circle of my density and then another, again, another circle here. You can see this. So this also shows that your data is having two concentrated circles. That means that it's going to give me, um, uh, you know, uh, a kind of information in terms of two major plots or, uh, two populated areas in my graph okay so uh, two populated areas in my graph here <coughs> so that's what we have and now on the sparse area so for example this part where the data is not present i mean or, or say sparsely populated uh, uh, area this is going to be a part of uh, my uh, uh, sparsely populated area so we have sparse population of my things here okay makes sense Clear guys, is this making sense to you? Any questions in this? Any questions, any questions guys? Are you able to understand these three plots? Cool. So uh, let's proceed then. Okay, so let's let's proceed. Uh, so we have the next plot called as rel plot. Okay, so rel plot is again giving the relationship between my uh, two different variables. Uh, scatter plot, again we have an option here and the line plot. Okay, so uh, uh, rel plot is again is basically the function kind of a joint plot only where we are trying to find out uh, the interaction kind of a study. Okay. So here again, we have two different options available. So again, here scatter plot remains the default. And then we can also do line plot in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the available option in terms of line. Okay. So that's again, we can do pretty much in that. So now can somebody tell me what is a scatter plot quickly? What is the difference between scatter plot and line plot? So we have seen so many examples. Just give me a basic difference between a scatter plot and a line plot guys quickly. Quickly guys.
quickly guys i think we have seen this so many examples here right so we have seen how things are getting populated here in terms of uh, uh, the individual points of my data and also the line means giving me the trend right so give me some pointer right at least uh, so that i can understand that you are able to get the things okay anything guys Okay, so we have an answer is scatter plot data in a dot format. What is exactly a dot format? What do you what do you mean to say here, Akash? Great guys, great. Any other answers? Okay, so we have a couple of answers here. Vasanta says a scatter plot data shown in dots, where as in line plot data shown in line. And Mahesh, we have just joined. Uh, please repeat questions. Okay, Mahesh, uh, the question is uh, in terms of the uh, the bivariate analysis, where we have options of uh, scatter plot and line plot, right? So uh, we are looking for in terms of data, right? So how exactly we want to find out the difference between a scatter plot and a line plot? So basic distinction, right? So I think people are pretty much understanding it. So scatter plot, it's more a kind of a dot kind of a thing, right? And line plot, we are trying to give the uh, a trend kind of a thing. So Mahesh, you have any other answers apart from this? Okay, great, great. So, I think let's proceed in that sense. Let's let's try to understand uh, how we can uh, work on the rel plot. So, rel plot here we are talking about uh, in terms of scatter plot and uh, my line plot. Okay. So now here we are talking about tips data. So in tips we are loading the data set uh, here. So now here we are loading the uh, my tips information. Tips is again a default data set which we have, right? So uh, now here in the tips data set you can see five. Uh, sorry, six different columns right so can can you read this so we have total bills we have tip we have sex we have smoker we have day we have time we have size okay so try to get a feel of this data okay so you can you can actually see the data and try to understand okay so it is giving us the information of how exactly my tips will be tips i mean tips like when you go out to dine out right and eventually uh uh, so, uh, I mean, when you go out to dine and then see, you can see, you know, how exactly the tips are being given to the waiters is more of that sort of how tips will be varying. So let's try to uh, take a minute and try to get a feel of this data. So what you can expect, give me some interesting inferences, which you by default expect, right? So by default, which you expect from the data, can you just give me for one or two, uh, by default inferences, which you can think of, this should be there in this. So can you give me a. Uh, because again, this intuition is very important, guys. Okay, so try to take a feel of this data and give me a practical thing which you can expect from this data. What should be there? Give me a one or two practical example. What you can expect from this data? Quickly, guys.
quickly guys what do you think uh, what should be part of my data so any anything which you think that which should be there like your basic like you know for example if you increase the family size if if, if the you know kind of uh, if the uh, if the bill is more you can expect higher tips right or maybe if there are more number of people uh, going out to dine maybe higher payment or uh, maybe you know smoker something from smoker something from uh, uh, gender or something anything so this is something kind of thing which you can think of right or give me any of the example which you generally have seen as a trend so try to talk guys again data analysis is not something you know i i just give you some codes and you see the data no again you have to understand how exactly this can be interacted how this can be inferred this is very important you have to get a feel of the data so try to talk i mean try to give me something which you want to see from this data and we will we'll look how we can find out also So Mahesh has an answer here. So tip spends by uh, patron depends on the time of week. Time of week, interesting, very good. Yes. So maybe on the weekends uh, we can expect higher tips, or maybe weekdays we cannot. We can expect lower tips. Yes, that's one thing. Very good observation. Anything else, guys? Anything else? Very good observation, Mahesh. Anything else which we could could see from the data? Guys, quickly, anything else which you want to see from the data? Cool. So I think in that sense, let's try to proceed further and let's try to see uh, how we can think of uh, uh, other things here. So let's try to see. So now one thing, let's look at this. Pretty simple. So I'm going to give you some easy, easy graphs first, okay? So, and then we're going to see how we can uh, convert the changes here, okay? So for example, uh, look at this, look at uh, this particular graph for now. I hope my screen is visible. Okay. So look at this particular graph for now. So we have rel plot. So rel plot here, we have X and Y. Okay. So X is nothing but my total bills. So we're trying to find out how my interaction is between my total bill and the tip. Okay. So I've just, just a ba basic thing, right? So we can expect as long as my tip bill size increases, a tip also increases. I mean, we won't be paying, uh, you know, uh, 50 rupees for the bill of 10, right? We cannot do that. Likewise, we can still pay 50 rupees for the bill of 500, right? So likewise, so as long as my bill increases, there's a high probability that my tip also increases, right? So by default, but again, if there's no concrete rule for that, but we can still expect that to be happening, right? So likewise, what I've tried to plot is, uh, X axis being my total bill and Y axis being my tip here, right? And now here my kind is scatter. So in the rel plot, as I've showed you, so we can do scatter plot as well as my line plot. So again, the argument says kind is scatter and kind is line for my these two different plots. Okay. Now, once we have seen the kind of scatter here, uh, what we can see is in terms of my data. So how my data is being spread. So total bill and my tips, right? So this is what my overall uh, plot looks like in terms of scatter plot. So again, in this, you can see some kind of spanning of, of fanning of my data. Fanning means, you know, starting here is a smaller uh, funnel and then it is spreading out like a, like a open fan, right? Kind of that sort. So again, a kind of loosely coupled upward trend, right? So you can still see there's an upward trend. So data is still kind of moving in one direction. It's not like, you know, zigzag, zigzag. It's not still no, not like that. So again, you can see, a faded kind of a positive correlation, right? So as long as my total bill is increasing, somehow I'm seeing that, yes, there is a, some positive trend, but not very strong trend, right? Yeah, because 
I could still see some other outliers. For example, here I could see 40, the bills are still low, tips are still low. Here, my tips is very low. So, so I can see this area specifically is where I could see uh, my tip size is lesser even if my bill size is higher, right? So, but again, I have some strong correlation like this. So you can see uh, there is a straight line pretty much going like this. So we have 40 for tip size is still more. So again, uh, in this graph, what I'm able to figure out is I have uh, a loosely coupled or uh, uh, not a very strong, but a weak relation between positive relation between my total bill and tips. Okay, so we can we can still somehow see there's a positive correlation, but not that strong. Okay, so that's my real plot for me. Likewise, we can also convert the same data into my kind plot. So kind as my line plot. So here I'm giving a kind as my line. So I'm going to plot a line plot in this. So now again, so it's more like a connect, connect. So all the dot points, I'm going to connect it with a line. Okay. So here also you can see a slightly upward trend, but again, my, uh, my, uh, I mean, the, 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 uh, the amplitude is changing a lot. So that is changing. That means that it is not very strong relationship rather more of a weak relationship, right? So that's what uh, I could see. But again, there is a weak positive relationship. It's not like an empty relationship, still, uh, uh, still a positive relationship only. It's still there. Okay. So now uh, on top of this, there is a very good argument available for us called as hue. So it is a very, very good uh, argument available. And this hue is available in almost uh, many of the graphs which we will be we will be seeing okay in uh, in private analysis I'll show you that so uh, in this rel plot as we were seeing data x and y now we are using one argument called hue what is hue here so hue is nothing but I'm adding a third dimension to my graph so what is a third dimension so now Till now, what I was seeing, I was trying to figure out the relationship between my total bill and tips, right? So I was trying to figure out the relationship between my total bill and tips alone. So only two these two data points. Now, I want to see how this particular trend of total bill and tip changes per day. So maybe this trend between total bill and tip might not be still valid uh, equally for every other day. So maybe Monday could be different, Tuesday could be different as, as you know, Mahesh or and Akash, they were saying, so we have uh, more tips in terms of the weekends, right? So we can, we can find, obviously we can expect more tips, but again, also want to see how this interaction is behaving between the total, total bills as well, right? So th three dimensions here, total bills and tips, and also getting the interaction per day. Okay. That's what I want to see. So that third dimension is added by using a hue variable. Okay. So now in this hue, I'm passing day. Now, what just happened the same graph which was a uh, 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 i mean a kind of a uh, scatter plot uh, uh, plain simple scatter plot for me is now converted into more of a uh, uh, i mean more colorful kind of a graph so where i could see the day variables thursday friday saturday and sunday now being represented in different colors so now i could see these things are coming up into different graphs i wanted right so different different shades of my information. So that is giving me a better perspective of my data, isn't it? So that is still giving me a better perspective of what I wanted to see. Is this, is this point making sense to everybody or am I, am I going really over the board in this case? Does this point making sense guys? Are you able to understand what is Hugh doing? Hugh is simply adding a third dimension to my data. Okay. A third dimension to my data. Make sense? Okay. So this is what my hue is doing in my rel plot. Make sense? So again, in this graph, although we added hue and we added one more dimension to my data and to my graph, but still I could see that this graph is not that readable, isn't it? I'm still not able to figure out, okay, I also I could see some different colors, uh, blue, orange, red, green, I could see some different colors, but still too much of an information in a single graph, isn't it, right? It's too much of an information. Still, I'm not able to very clearly see, okay, uh, where exactly, because there's too much of overlapping in this category, too much of overlapping, right? So exactly, I think Akash also mentioned, mentioned the same question. So how to define a particular color to particular day? Okay, so how to define a particular color to particular day? 
uh, that I have to even look out that. So I mean, Hue is by default giving you. You can. You, I mean, uh, uh, you you have you might have an option. I would to. I need to look into this, Akash. So even I'm not hundred percent sure how we can define. But we I know that we can set the color palette. We can pass an option of color palette on this. But still, it's it's talking about you know uh, uh, from that color palette we're gonna choose the uh, elements which you want to find out. But again, if you wanna pinpoint what color to what exactly day, I need to find out. I need to figure out that information. So I'm not hundred percent sure of that for now. Okay. So now again, again, I think Mahesh has asked the right question. So how do we read it? Yes. So this becomes a little tricky to read because still it is not giving a very clear information of how exactly we're gonna find out. Uh, you know uh, what graph is uh, what point because there's too much of overlapping here right it's not a very very uh, clear graph to read right so to overcome this problem uh, we have an option to bifurcate this data okay so we can obviously bifurcate this data so now for example here what i can do is we can add one more column call as uh, one more argument call as call okay so this call that means that i'm trying to create different graphs for different days. Okay, so now look at this. I've added one more, uh, uh, you know, kind of dimension here. So although I'm seeing total bill and tips, that's my X and Y, but I've added a third dimension, hue is X, but now I'm trying to say that, plot me different graphs for different days. Don't give me one graph with all the days intact. Okay, so give me different graphs, okay? And the call wrap is an optional argument, because if I give it two, that means that in a single line, give me only two graphs. Don't make it too, you know, uh, smaller and give me multiple graphs in a single line. So call wrap means that I can maximum have two graphs in a single line. Okay, so that's what the call wrap says. So now here, I have day, I have given us call as day. So that means that different, a different graph will be created for different days. So you can see this day is equal to Thursday, day is equal to Friday, day is equal to Saturday, day is equal to Sunday. So I have four different graphs being made for the column day okay and now also i've added a fourth dimension which is hue is sex so now for each of my day also i'm seeing that how the pattern is changing based on male and female as well i can still do that so on thursdays i can see this is the data of male and females so now on fridays i could see that this is the data of male and females okay and this is for the saturday this is for the sunday so now very obviously i can see that the majority of my outliers, which is this point, four points, right, are falling on Saturdays. Again, it's pretty evident. And also I could see that the data points, the number of data points is also very high on Saturdays and Sundays. So definitely that the dine outs are happening more often over the weekends. And also I could see that the major outliers, a tendency to pay higher tips generally is more prominent over the weekends. And also very interestingly, you could see that these guys are males, okay? So you can see this, these guys are males. So tendency of paying the higher uh, bill amount is generally, uh, you know, uh, 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 you can see this, the outliers are majorly towards males, right? So also, and that too on Saturday, it's a party night, right? So, so th this is some kind of business inference, the logic which we can uh, kind of, uh, you know, read it from the graph, the data very clearly. I hope I'm making sense to you, right? So, this is how my data can be, I can I can add as much complexity as I want in the graph, okay? And Seaborn is giving me that option. I have uh, those options where I can add the clear complexities, okay? That's pretty much possible. But here again, we have to also understand what all different things I want. Do I need to have these complexities or I can still have uh, the problem solved I mean, uh, by only using the simple graph, okay? It's not always mandatory to plot a complex graph. That is not mandatory. But it's important, even if you're plotting a simple graph, you should be able to get the information out of it. So what does it mean? This is very important. You cannot just keep the things blank. And then, you know, uh, you have just run the code and now your job is over and you don't know how to do it. You got it? Make sense? So are you able to read this graph? Is anybody having any problem in reading this graph, guys? Again, I'm asking this question. So if anybody is having any question in reading this graph by any chance.
Okay. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. If multiple object graph is created, multiple object is also created. No. So that's a very good question, Akash. No, multiple objects are not getting created here. In fact, if you could see uh, in the same graph itself, let me, let me show it to you. So uh, you can see this, right? So this is the object ID, which also is more of a facet grid uh, options we have. So you can see this one facet grid, grid object is getting created. So which itself has four different graphs. So there are not four different objects is getting created here. It's, it's a single object, but single object has grid, facet grid. So it has multiple subgraphs in it. Okay. So that is an option we have available. So, but it's a very good question, Akash. Okay, makes sense guys. So just to quickly give you one more example. So uh, same thing here. So instead of having hue as my sex, which is my male and female, I've added hue as my smoker, like, you know, smoker and non smoker, right? So now interestingly, what I could just see is, you know, um, uh, here on the Friday, I could see the number of non smokers are very less. And then on the on Sundays, I could see the non smokers, uh, sorry, uh, non smokers are again, uh, very high. So smokers are generally very high towards my weekend. So Fridays and Saturdays, I could see majority of my smokers coming in. But again, it's an yeah, almost an even even spread there. Or also there is, uh, I would say, not a very strong uh, correlation between the outliers. So again, I could see the non smokers as well as smokers both are paying the tips. So again, there's no very clear rela relationship as we were having between my males and females and all that. And also I could see that still I have that finer trend in which I could see uh, there's an upward trend going in terms of total bills and tips for both the smokers and non-smokers. But again, not a very clear picture, not a very strong relationship. Okay. So although Friday it was very, uh, I'm sorry, on Thursday it is still better, but on Sundays uh, it is very, very spread out. So I could not make out any trend on Sunday. So Sundays uh, I, I have like, you know, very absurd kind of a data trend. So it's not a very strong relationship either way. Cool. So uh, that's pretty much it guys. So I think let's stop for today and we can start with the uh, rel plot on line from tomorrow. Okay. So we, uh, we have studied the scatter plot today. Maybe we can start the line plot tomorrow. Okay? So we can keep that for tomorrow. I hope that is making sense. So uh, till now, whatever graphs we have plot. So although we have done some good graphs, I hope that is making sense to you, right? So uh, in terms of graph, it is not showing any, uh, you know, problematic things. So I hope you are able to understand what we're doing. Isn't it? Just a quick yes or no guys. I hope I'm able to understand. I, I, I'm able to clear your doubts in terms of the problems we have. Yes, rel plot by default is a scatter plot. Great, yes. Yes, so it's a good question. So again, uh, scatter plot is a default. Uh, it's a simple sign uh, 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 graph, uh, Vasanta. But again, we have another question. Just give me a minute. So we have question, I find difficulty reading graph, how can I achieve it? So uh, 
right so difficulty in reading the graph okay it's very important to read a graph okay there, there is nothing fancy in just plotting it so eventually your objective is to read the graph okay it's you have to read the graph that's what we have to do first now in terms of uh, uh, I, I would say achieving it so it will only come with practice so as much of graph you plot right so that's going to be getting you uh, uh, the kind of uh, con uh, confidence you need for the graph. Okay? So uh, that's, that's I would say in terms of uh, data, in terms of uh, practice, that's what is the key to achieve it. So, but again, I'll be, uh, I mean, I'll make sure that from the tomorrow onwards, I'll ask inferences from you guys. Okay? So uh, as today I was asking the question in terms of how to, you know, how intuitively we can think of the data. So that is very important that you connect with the data. If you don't connect with the data, you will never read the data as if it's a fun. It will be a job for you always. So try to try to interact with the data by yourself. Try to think about it. Okay, so you'll, you'll be feeling good with this. So tomorrow onwards, I'll be asking you the inferences, and then definitely I'll be also giving you from my side. So that we try to achieve it together. Yep. Uh, okay, so uh, I think uh, yeah. So Vasanta, as I said, so it's it's a, a pretty simple. So it's more like a, a, it's a generic equation for my sine plot. So you can find this, uh, I've tried to plot five different uh, you know, plots, you can see that's so a five different waves of my sine graph, uh, just by giving some noise to that. So that's what I did. So it's a plain simple equation. I mean, you can find it on Google also, but I've tried to plot five different sine waves in this and then um, by adding some noise on top of it. So that's what I did in this. A simple, simple sine wave. Okay. Okay. Great. So I think with this guys, I'm pretty much done. Thank you so much for being patient and listening to me. So let's, let's again meet tomorrow, same time, uh, 10 PM. Uh, and then we're going to finish up uh, some of the interesting topics left in Seaborn. So Seaborn is a very important topic guys. So that is the reason why we have, sp we, have sp we will be spending four or five days on this. It's a very important topic and we have enough content to talk about in Seaborn. So we have, we have so many contents to talk about in Seaborn. So uh, let's be patient and let's try to hear this out and let's try to uh, finish the part uh, to the best of our knowledge and we'll see that. Okay. Great, great guys. So thank you so much. Let's uh, meet again tomorrow, same time, 10 PM. And I'll try to start tomorrow at the, at the dedicated time at 10. But again, if there is any delay, I'll definitely ping you as I did today also in the chat. Okay. So, but try Let's try to meet tomorrow, same time at 10 PM. And then we'll, we'll continue from where we have left today. Great guys, thank you so much. Then see you tomorrow. Uh, till then, uh, have a good evening. Stay safe and happy.